Here to tell us about the consumer experience of ATSC 3.0 is So Vang, Vice President of Advanced Technology at NAB Pilot, which used to be NAB Labs. It's the R&D arm of NAB, right? That's correct, yes. So uh, we just had a really good deep dive into the technology of ATSC 3.0 and how it gets transmitted, but what is the user experience going to be like? Right, so probably the best way to do it is to kind of show you, kind of go through a little bit of this. So what we have done is we have built some of what we call the pilot home gateway, and our focus is on the interactive runtime environment. And that is one of the new features of ATSC3 that really focuses on the user experience. So let me uh, just uh, take you through a couple of these. For example, um, the, run the interactive runtime environment is purely based on uh, web standards. And as you can see here, uh, we actually have developed some applications using, the, uh, using that platform. So uh, a, a typical application that would provide by a broadcaster is the weather. And in this particular case, we're showing the weather for the week, and we shrink the video to the upper right corner. And this can be done with over-the-air transmitted signals. That's correct. This is all about broadcast TVs. Uh, and certainly with 3.0, we have the advantage of also utilizing the broadband, but our focus is that it should work, the, the two should work together. Another example of a service here is on-demand. Uh, this is something that you see with over-the-top services, but 3.0 actually enabled this type of capability or services for broadcasters as well. So, um, some, some additional ones are, are like uh, interactive uh, news, for example. We work with MPG to put this uh, application together, and here we're showing uh, on-demand news. So these are assets that local broadcasters already have, but 3.0 actually provides a convenient tool for them to make these assets easily accessible to the viewers. So for example here, we're clicking on the on-demand, and as you can see, we have a full library of, of local content, and we can just pick one. This is sort of campaign time, so let's pick, let's pick this one. So here you go, and right? If someone wanted to learn what's latest in the campaign, they could just click on that and see it. That's, ex that's exactly right. That's why it's news on demand. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, what we're seeing here is actually being served from a server because you, can't, you don't actually have an RF receiver chip in these boxes yet. That's correct. But we, we hope that that, that will change very soon here. Yeah. At the moment, it, it's still under development, but, and the standards are mostly done, right? Well, certainly we're making a lot of progress on, on the hardware, the physical layer. Yes, yeah, so you're going to see a lot more demonstration of that here. Uh, and on the upper layer, where, where the interactive runtime environment, we're making a lot of progress there as well. As this is the reason why we have been able to uh, develop this prototype very quickly and demo here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When do you think uh, consumers will actually be able to have this in their home? What, what's the time frame are we looking at here? Now, you put me on the spot for that one. <laughs> I, I'm not going to hold you to it. But, I mean, are we talking one year, two years, three years? Well, certainly uh, the Koreans are, I believe they're expected to deploy in 2018. I would expect that by around that time or later that, uh, later that year, we should, start, we, we should uh, start to have, you know, some, uh, some, maybe some trials. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. at least that may be a little bit aggressive, but that that will that will be that will be ideal. <laughs> I think the standards will be com are expected to be completed maybe by the end of this year, reach final standard state. I would say that probably a large number of the specs will be done by the end of this year. Yeah, and then of course you got to get the broadcasters and uh, the equipment manufacturers and everybody to build the stuff and and work together to see make sure it all works right. That's right, that's right, yeah. So we're talking, you said 2018, right? So we're talking a couple years. Yeah, I would say realistically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for the whole end of the end, you know, I would say that, that's probably a realistic uh, date, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, can you talk to the uh, transition? Is it, how is it gonna work? When we transition to digital video to begin with, digital broadcasting, they existed in parallel with analog broadcasting. Uh, is the same thing going to happen here, 1.0 and 3.0 existing in parallel? Well, that certainly is one way that broadcasters could, 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 uh, could transition to, to 3.0. Um, but I couldn't possibly, you know, uh, comment on that at this point. I'm sure that there are multiple ways that we can trans transition to it. Uh, 
but you know, I'm a technology guy. <laughs> my, my goal is to show what's possible. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, and what's possible here is pretty impressive. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much.